And but you know how it is. The police always associated, you know, uh, with you. You just standing around there. Is that your blow pop right there? No, I don't know that blow pop. That's your blow pop. Next minute you know you catching the charge to a fucking blow pop. Bucks. Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. And if you are not already a part of our book club, please remember to hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube and for a small monthly fee of $5. You babies, Yes, you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets Let's it. Get now. ready to do uh, David Ritz and Eddie James' Rage to Survive. I think this is part 26. So where we left off, you got Eddie James and her dude, Artist Mills, okay? They were pulling a caper. Oh, a grandiose caper, okay? Their name is Mud in the streets because they old dirty junkies, okay? They live in that sewers junkie life, okay? They robbing their friends, they riding around in stolen cars. That's lie. Stone, you know, Maybe. gave up. Uh, what you doing, Etta and artists? You ain't doing nothing, you on the bus, you say, well, it's a, a Cadillac over there that one of my uh, peoples, I don't know their name, stole, but I mean, go around there to the Kroger and pick up that Cadillac sitting in uh, the back on the side. Pick that up, that's for the you. The last caper that they pulled was they was gonna go back to this particular bank, okay, where the bank manager loved him some Eddie James, okay? Eddie James walking in there with her check, Hey, boo! Ooh, I'm here with another check. This one is for 10000 okay? She walking towards the dude, but she feeling funny. Oh, shit. Something feel funny. She said the manager's smile felt forced, okay? And on top of that, it was two other dudes in the manager's office just standing she there. She walking towards the dude, but she feeling funny. Oh, shit. Something feel funny. She said the manager's smile felt forced, Okay, and on top of that, it was two other dudes in the manager's office just standing there. Come on, come on in, Netta. So she like, oh no, this is oh no, this ain't right. So she turned around, she hightailed it back to the car with artists out front with the car running. Okay, because they always got to do a getaway. It's always got to. It's a caper. I told you, it's a caper. And when a caper is going on, there's always a car somewhere running and waited with a getaway driver. So okay. at any rate, they hop in the car, they run back to their little pad they had and um, grab Danto. Who'd you grab Danto from, uh, 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 Etta? Who, who was with Danto back at the apartment? That's, that's the question. Uh, they grab Danto and they figure, ooh, 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 where we gonna go, what we gonna do? Texas, yeah, let's go back to Texas. Uh-huh, Texas, the place that still don't know that nigga's free. Go back to, to Texas. We ran okay. home, grabbed Danto, packed up, and headed out. No way could we stay in LA. We had enough dope to last us until Texas. Texas, though, meant trouble. In Texas, we had a hard time scoring. We were only able to supply ourselves day by day. Our nerves were shattered. I was strung out. Artis was tired of running up and down the back alleys looking for dope. It was a desperate situation. By the time we pulled into San Antonio, our emotions were stretched to the limit. We were living in the Mexican side of town in a Holiday Inn where we were ordering room service and building up our bill, but not paying the rent. 
We also had a room back in the Black Hood, a hideaway, where we were copping, cutting, and shooting dope. The hideaway was in a boarding house owned by a wonderful man named Henderson Glass. Every day was a hassle. She said locating a righteous dealer was hard. It was no easy task. She said on occasions, you know, Mills, he itching and scratching. And I also know this about her dude, okay? Artist Mills, he may be on dope, but he ain't no slacker. He ain't no easy type dude that you could just run up on him and just take his ice cream sandwich. You can't do that with artists. Okay. Artist resolve is to whoop everybody's ass. Okay, it ain't going my way. Okay, all right, let me just whoop his ass and then we go over here. Okay, that will be like, no, 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 don't do that. Artists, don't do that. You know, we may, you know, need this ninja down the line. Okay, and one time they was involved with um, one dude who was not that bad, but because artists got the itchies and the scratchies, artists are like, man, fuck that nigga, he, he, he doing too much, let's go, let's go. Etta knew that it was going to be a problem later on. Next day, we were driving down an alley looking for another connection when two cop cars came flying in, blocking us on either side. For I know it, they had their pistols pointing at us. The main man, a notorious Texas narcotics officer named Wild Bill, was screaming, freeze or we'll blow your brains out. They can't say that no more. They can't say we'll blow your brains out no more. You can't do shit like that. But like I said, they in Texas, okay? Texas didn't know that the ninjas is free. Do Texas know that the ninjas is free down there? I don't know. I don't know. Because I know they let y'all live in the little black cities, but everywhere else, I heard it is a, it's a, it's a, it's a bother to maneuver in Texas sometimes. But you know, that's not my lane. Okay? I love the Houston. I love the Houston. Okay? But parts of Texas, I'm not going okay. She got the dope in her hand. Okay? She clutching it. Okay? Shit. We might get out later. I don't know if I should drop this dope on the ground. Okay? But she know this is the real deal. Okay, luckily she was able to drop the dope on the ground and, but you know how it is, the police always associated, you know, uh, with you, you just standing around there, is that your blow pop right there? No, I don't know that blow pop, that's your blow pop. Next minute you know you catching a charge for a fucking blow pop. They whisked us over to the boarding house hideaway, which was filled with needles. Now, let me tell you the reason why she called that dude Henderson Glass a wonderful man because Henderson Glass knew that his borders was old dope fiends in there, okay? And something told him, ooh, maybe we should clean this funkin' ass place up, okay? Remember, where the hell is Danto? Who got Danto? Poor Danto, okay? But anyway, luckily, the dude had a hunch, let me clean this place up. So when they got there, the place was clean. The dude, the boarding house man, what's his name again? Henderson Glass said, don't worry, Etta. I'ma bail you out, baby. At her in the car with her dude in the back. Don't worry about it, baby. Henderson say he gonna bail us out. Artists say he gonna bail you out. You at a James, not me. Now I'm your husband, you know. But I mean, he gonna bail you out, baby. She already getting this feeling like, what? Why is you being so negative about this situation? Something ain't right. What's going on? What's going on is, is that Artist Mills is getting tired. Okay, he tired of running behind Etta James and her dope issues. Okay, he wasn't even doing the dopey until he got with the Etta James. Okay, he was old reefer man. How you go from reefer to to horse? Well, he is with the Etta James. The artist says that he is getting ready to take the charges for everything. Okay, baby, I'm just gonna take the charges for everything. Etta like no. Why would you do that? It's all stuff. See, Etta is so used to dealing with dirty dicks who would say in her face, oh, that's not my drugs, that's her drugs. Those her drugs, lock her up. Not me. But she don't understand that by him accepting all the charges, that's his way of showing his love. Plus on top of that, he tired of running around with the Etta James. When we got to headquarters, the press was waiting. Photographers and reporters shouting out questions. We didn't say anything. When we got inside and were interrogated by the officials, Mills spoke up and said all the dope was his. Wouldn't let me say a word. I mean, he was adamant. Later, he told me that was because he wanted to go to jail, that he was tired of our Bonnie and Clyde routine, 
tired of racing around getting high and living life like desperate fools. Jails look very good to him. Next, okay. we got a lawyer who tried to see if Texas would send artists back to California on the bad check charges, a lesser offense, but Texas said and said no. They wouldn't let him go. While Bill saw to it that artist was put in the pen where he stayed for nearly 10 years. So Uncle Frank then already told her, stop fucking with your mammy. Stop messing with her. You're allowing Dorothy to do to Danto what she did to you. Why do you keep messing with her, you know? And I understand the love, but you gotta love your child more than you love yourself. You gotta want better for your child more than you want for yourself, okay? And by exposing him to Dorothy so much, that is, you know, I mean, you, you doing your child a disservice, okay? And I know that you feeling like I don't really trust nobody else but Dorothy, but can you trust Dorothy? And let me tell you why, Dorothy ain't shit. Dorothy ain't shit, she crazy, but she ain't shiz, okay? What happened was, the strange thing is that Dorothy was attracted to Wild Bill. Years later, she corresponded with him and even made him a robe. Because remember, she is a seamstress, right? That made me crazy. I couldn't stand the man. He said in some interview that he was proud of having positively influenced my career. That was bullshit. Hi, Will Bill. Wow, Bill, how? How did you pop, by locking the lady up? She still ain't sober. In interrogating me and Mills, it came out that the car had come from Sly Stone. Oh, you just gonna slide that in there, huh? This, this, this listen. Okay, so here come the first 48, y'all. Here come the first 48. You know that goddamn Eddie James, and she was solid at first. But now she in the Junkie Jones real bad, okay? This is what she's saying, okay? First 48, have an ass bitch. Edit the James, use us, ooh, my, anyway. The way she put this right here, hold tight, y'all. Here it come, here it come. And interrogating me and Mills, it came out that the car had come through Sly Stone. How? How? All you had to do was say that you found the car down there at the Kroger in the left side of the parking lot in the back. How did Sly Stone, Sly name even get uh, 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 involved in this situation? Sly don't have nothing to do with nothing. First 48 ass. Ooh, I hate it. What they offer you, girl? A cigarette and a Coke? Ooh, you made me mad. You, I'm mad at her at that part. Back okay. in LA, when the feds came to question Sly, he was ballistic. Yes, girl. Why wouldn't he be mad? He trying to help you junkie motherfuckers roll around and do your Cephas and Reese uh, uh, situation. I'm acting a nigga today, y'all. I'm sorry. I, I think I have regular calls. He's trying to help you and your, you know, junkie boyfriend do a situation. You pull Sly down to the gutter with you, bitch. But overall, Sly said, the car ain't mine. I don't know what you're talking about, which is the absolute truth. The car ain't his, okay? And plus, Sly Stallone, according to the editor, was going through his own legal problems. He ain't got time to be uh, uh, backpedaling with you, girl. Shit. Okay, but they left him alone because when Sly said it wasn't his car, goddamn it, it wasn't his car. It wasn't his car. It was Uncle Frank who gave Dorothy the money to fly to Texas. And Uncle Frank who gave us the money to get from Texas to New York. Uncle Frank was still my guardian angel. Etta, he said, you better stop and sort things out. I tried, but I'm not sure I succeeded. Rather than me controlling circumstances, circumstances were controlling me. Texas let me go with the stipulation that I put myself in a methadone program the minute that I got to New York. New York City wasn't any prettier. Dorothy, Danto, and I, lived at the Gorham Hotel on 52nd Street between 6th and 7th Avenue. That's the dumbest, I, uh, why, why is New York made like that? Why is it made, you supposed to do numbers and alphabets. I'm from DC, okay, I shit together. We know how to picture, you will never get lost in DC, ever. It didn't take long to get hooked on methadone. I also started sneaking around and mixing my legal shots with illegal fixes of heroin. By the time winter set in, I was ready to perform again. I got booked into Chicago for three weeks at the Burning Spear, which used to be the Delice Club. The engagement ran through the holidays and ended on New Year's Eve. Chess 
rented me a station wagon and I drove out there over the turnpikes, taking Dorothy and Danto along. New Year's Eve came around. We had three shows that night. The last, a breakfast set at 4 a.m. Man, I was B. Goodbye 1973 and hello 1974. By the time the gig was over, the city was awake and the sky was pearl gray. I'd had it. I'd sung myself hoarse. All I wanted was to catch a cab, get to the hotel, give Danto a New Year's kiss, and sleep the day away. When I opened the door, I was shocked. This had to be the wrong room. The place was empty. The bed was stripped. The closets bare. No Dorothy, no Danto. Dorothy had split with Danto and didn't even bother to leave a note. Why? Why would you think your crazy ass mammy, mammy would leave a note? She has some uh, mental health concerns herself. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, she doesn't even understand quite fully the effect on her child. Okay, just like the mama don't quite understand fully the effect on her child and her grandchild that she's doing by whisking, you know, these babies away. That bitch is crazy. I threw the couple of rags Dorothy had left me in the closet, went out to cop some dope and drove the rented car back to New York, stopping every hour to call Uncle Frank for news. It wasn't until I reached Manhattan that he'd heard something. Your mother and Danto are in Denver, he said. They put her off the bus at the Greyhound station in Denver. Seems as though she ran out of money. Remember how we opened this book? Okay. Remember, she grabbed her baby and ran to Fresno, but they, they, they put her off the bus halfway there because she ain't have enough money to get all the way to Fresno. Was it Fresno? Uncle Frank told Etta, thank God for the Uncle Franks, okay? The Uncle Franks told Etta, okay, look, Etta, I'm going to get, you know, your baby and bring your baby back here. Okay, or send your mammy money so that they can get back here. Now, I can control my crazy sister, okay? And I will make sure that Danto is taken care of. But I need you to get yourself together. I wasn't back in New York a week when I was nabbed by the narcs. It happened after a routine visit to the Methadone Center. I'd just been given my weekly dose and was leaving the place when those two guys in trench coats jumped out of an unmarked car. So when you see two big white guys in black coats hop out of some kind of American car, you run, goddammit, okay? You run, because they're coming to get you. Not him, not him, but you, bitch. Black coats walk up to a, uh, 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 don't go nowhere. Are you James Etta Hawkins, otherwise known as Etta James? Etta James says she was fitting to act a nigga. Why? Why you gonna act a nigga with them black coats right in front of you, girl? What you think, they don't have the pistols on them? You know they always waiting for a reason, Editor James, okay? But she said she calmed herself down because she ain't want no smoke this time, okay? Next up, Rikers Island. Rikers turned out to be liberal. Once they found out I was an addict, they put me in a methadone line. So I had my daily fix. Funny thing about methadone, it worked for about six months. During that period heroin won't get you high do you know i never knew that i did i never knew what methadone was i never knew that 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 was something that they utilized to stop like i never knew the effect of methadone over her on a heroin addict you have no motive other than psychological to score junk but after six months you could easily be hooked on both and going cold turkey off meth is the sickest sick you'll ever experience I mean, I ain't ever been that sick. I was also told meth is bad for your bones, joints, and arteries, which may be why I've suffered with arthritis for the past dozen years. I don't know. Uh, hmm. Ooh, I... So I want to say something right here, but I'm going to let it go. Chess hired a lawyer who convinced the court that, yes, I was willing to report to the parole officer in Texas. And yes, I was willing to turn myself in to the California officials. If I was going as far as Texas, might as well go on home and face the music.
Marv Schlachter got me the plane ticket and provided a lawyer. Greg Fishback, who met me in San Antonio, arranged a visit between me and Mills. She said, poor Mills. She said, Mills was just sitting there. He couldn't even look at her, okay? That's because he's sick of your ass. Okay. Artist said to Etta, it's not that I don't love you. I do, but right now, I need to be alone. Mean Etta, get the fuck out of my face. I'm trying to get myself together here. And bitch, you still don't look together. With that, I left my husband and appeared before the parole board. Once I proved to them I was on my way back to L.A. to deal with these bad check charges, they let me go. With Danto and Dorothy still in Palo Alto with Uncle Frank, I moved in to the fourth. The Etta James album sold well and got me nominated for another Grammy. FM radio played Leave Your Hat On. The Gabriel Meckler material started catching on, and I even had offers to sing at rock festivals. But I wasn't going anywhere. The California court system had another plan for me. I appeared before the judge, a nice Jewish man who I learned later had lost two daughters to drug overdose. My lawyers warned me. He said, Etta, this judge could send you up the river for a long time. Long, long time. But when I appeared before him, I didn't see anger in his eyes. I saw compassion. Slowly, he looked over the pending bad check charges and read the Texas report on the heroin bust. Etta James, he said, your problem is drugs. I don't think you're a menace to society. I just think you're a junkie in desperate need of help. I could send you to the Corona Institution for Women and let you serve time. Oh, shit, not the Corona. Not the Corona Institution for the Women. Oh, no. Mm, not that mother. I heard that place was bonkers. Okay, I ain't gonna make it that judge. What's the answer to? What's the next one? Or, he added, I could put you in a program, a long-term, no-nonsense, lock-up, live-in program that might once and for all help you rid yourself of this self-destructive urge. Judge, judge, your honor, your, your, your trumanship. Judge, sir, I'll take that one. That one. I want that one, sir. I'll take that. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. And if you are not already a part of our book club, please remember to hit the Patreon link below and or the join button and for a small monthly fee of $5. You babies, yes you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, remember this, the same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down. Naysayers, my patron loves. You babies, have a good one.